The three and four year olds sang, most of them mask free, as they waited for lunch at Future Generation Learning Center in Bloomfield. Upstairs, young toddlers enjoyed chicken and rice, spoon fed by teachers who wondered how they might keep masks on kids as young as two years old when Governor Murphy's executive order kicks in this Friday. You know, they're pulling it down or pulling it off, um, losing them or leaving them behind. So it's going to be pretty difficult. Rather than teaching them, um, and working with them on the important skills in life, they're going to be worrying about, you know, have to readjust a mask. Lynette Galante owns Future Generation and heads a state child early education association. She says nobody expected the executive order, which sets a November 1st date for child care center staff to get fully vaccinated or tested for COVID at least once a week. It also requires all staff, visitors, and kids two and older to mask up. I'm expecting a huge backlash. Um, and, I, you know, we need to be prepared if this is supposed to roll out on Friday. What do we do? It's just not fair. Everybody should have the right. Teachers should not be forced to take the vaccine. If I had to take vaccine because of my job, if I wasn't forced to it, I wouldn't have taken it. This North Arlington mom stood on the front porch with her five-year-old Noah, hoping to enroll him here at least temporarily so she can get to work. She's dismayed by vaccination and mask mandates. As far as the mask, like my son has allergies. So the fact that like, you know, his nose will be running, the mask gonna be wet. He's gonna have to constantly be changing it. It's going to be uncomfortable. It turns into a situation where the teachers are now becoming mask police. Guy Falzerano runs the Lightbridge Child Care Facility franchise. He says eight parents yanked their kids out of his centers yesterday all over mandatory masking. It's another blow to an already hard hit industry. Falzerano figures pandemic pressures have shuttered one third of the 4,300 New Jersey child care centers operating pre-COVID. What's going on in the industry right now is not like anything I've seen in the 23 years I've been in this business. Morale is at an all time low. Uh, teachers are burnt out. We're just unsure of how we can stretch this already thin workforce. We've been losing people throughout the pandemic and candidly, the number one reason why we're losing people is a compensation issue. Child education advocate Megan Tavarima says centers can't compete with Amazon wages, for example, and vax mandates could drive out even more staffers. The vaccination, obviously, the main worry is our workforce is already so bare. And there are programs across the state that have empty classrooms and long waiting lists because we simply don't have the people. Galante is able to staff for about 50 kids out of 60 available slots, despite offering raises. We get a phone call on a Friday saying I need to come in on Monday and I need my child to start right away because I just got called back to work. And we are the backbone of, of what's keeping people going to work. So we need that support. The staff here at Future Generation all must have their COVID shots, but not every child care facility has required that. And many expect it's going to be a struggle to get everyone vaccinated. It appears as though most are in that 55 uh, to 60 percent range in terms of number of staff members that are vaccinated. Many are concerned about um, reproductive uh, issues associated with the vaccine. That even though health experts note COVID vaccines don't affect fertility. New York City's already implemented similar requirements at its child care centers. The mask mandate is not unusual. Uh, in fact, they have provided services under very strict guidance about who can come in the building, class size, what they need to do. And they have risen to the occasion. Industry leaders claim the federal government funneled roughly 700 million in art pandemic aid specifically for child care centers in New Jersey, but they haven't seen a dime. They want the governor to unlock those funds. In terms of distribution of, of resources, we're getting as money on the street. We put a ton on the street already and we're getting it on the street as fast as we can. It brings us no joy. I want to make sure I say that with great emphasis to be mandating masks, particularly on little kids. I mean, that's not something that we're doing happily, but we are doing it consistent with the CDC, with our neighbors, and we're doing it based on the, on the facts. Meanwhile, teacher Felicia Smith says she'll work it out with the kids. We have to do what we have to do to be safe but it's still gonna be difficult, but you know, safety first. In Bloomfield, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.